Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, the Meteorological Service of Trinidad and Tobago has issued a yellow level hot spell, which is in effect until September 29th. Now, many farmers have been complaining that the excessive heat is resulting in crop losses and are hoping things get better. This morning, we are joined by the president of the Carlson Field Village Council and Farmers Association, Mr. Shiraz Khan, to talk more about this. Mr. Khan, good morning. A pleasant morning to you, viewers, and the station. I know everybody in the background. Yes, and yeah. I know with just your T-shirts alone, proud to be a farmer. Always. You are, you know, coming and sharing uniform. exactly what's happening I'm with the uniform. farmers this morning. Yeah. Um, tell us where the farmers stand, though, because I was reading an article, and it said that apparently you are losing crops, um, some of your livestock and the cattle, they had skin and bones. So let's start with crops first. Tell us how the crops are affected by this heat and which crops are affected. Okay, so... Again, pleasant morning viewers and so on, right? Um, farmers are very challenged at this point in time in that the heat is so excessive. And, and it, it didn't start last week or just a couple of days ago. Um, if you could remember for the parade, we, um, for the Independence Parade, we had people that were collapsing and fainting. And, and even before the build up to that, it was hot. So yes. we have been facing this for almost, almost six, five to six weeks now, the heat. But um, what happened in, in terms of the crop? because of the intensity, because what happening is that the humidity is so high mm -hmm. and with the heat of the, the sun that the, the, the flowers is not getting enough energy to stay on some of the plants, mm -hmm. right? Talking to an, an expert in, in crop planting and asking him what causing that, he said basically is the heat. Mm -hmm. So it have people who have any crop that is flowering at this time, it's very challenged mm -hmm. for that crop to, to make it through. Um, it is, it is important that you have water, but in some crops you can't put too much of water because if you give it too much of water, you're going to saturate the soil too much and yes. create some fungus taking place coming up there and some new thing you have to treat. So, so water alone is not, it's just that this heat is so tremendous that you, you, you have a situation where the plant's just not getting enough air or not circulation of air to in the, breathe it, and to bloom right, and to, because that what of happening thing. is that is for hours you see the place just still yeah not even breeze blowing and that is a very concerning thing to, to, to the farmers and then what happening is that you have a situation where that um you know we're not hearing nothing from the ministry of agriculture because we have the university we have um utt we have aica we have all of these research institutions yeah. and we're not hearing what it is that we can do or how they can help or what is out there but Mr. Us. Khan, so we, before we go to solutions and getting external organizations to assist the farmers, can you quantify or estimate how much loss is? That is a very difficult thing to do because it's not like all of them, like in Port of Spain, operated. Mm -hmm. They are scattered throughout the country. Yeah. And you have situations where in some cases it, the weather is worse than in some, in some areas because they may have a lot more trees in some area that may give you some sort of a protection. A little and shade. Shade yeah. and them kind of thing. But yeah. then again, you have the people that farm in open land and they are faced with all the difficulties that is there. Hmm. You know, so you, you have a situation and, and, and um, climate change has been an issue around a long time, but I don't think we have dealt with it in a, in a very extensive way to look at what it is going on because what is happening outside should give us an ex idea of what we should be looking to deal with and how yes. we're going to mitigate it. Yeah. Now, a lot of people saying greenhouses and, you know, the new modern technology into farming and all of that. But when you take into consideration, right, that those ideas are now coming out and a lot of people uh, cannot facilit be facilitated with these new ideas because you, you know and you all would know that for a long time now we have been crying out for land tenure to get our land. So if you don't have land tenure, how do you go with new technology? Well, oh. let's look at cattle and let's look at livestock because you have livestock, I, I, right? I, I, right? I, I, and um, I, again, it's the, the article that I read, Mr. Khan. It was very, very concerning because a lot of um, people are saying that their their cattle are skin and bones because yeah, they don't is, have the, the, the quality grass for them to be able to feed. Right. I, 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 I don't know if you want to just watch I don't know if you, sorry, I didn't put it up before. If you watch something there, that, that is 11 o'clock in the morning. Right. In the hot sun, the animals, rather than go on graze, they rather go in the pond, mm -hmm. cool out or stay in the shade. Yes. So you, even though you have forage available for them, they just don't want to go there for that because the heat is so intense 
And if you see there, the horses and the cows are in the water. Now, I know that people at home can't see it, but what I'm looking yeah. at right now is just a picture of the cattle, cattle in, the, in the water, water in the river, they just, they because they're so hot, they're they want to so cool hot. off. Yes. But the thing about it is that, similar to you, all you want to do is to take... Cool off. Cool, and some people might be a couple of times, they have the luxury of that. Some people continue drinking water, put some additives in it to ensure that they don't get hydrated. What will the cows do? Hmm. And then, and then, profound into what it is taken, especially in the Carson Field area, right? Um, this water is not ideal to drink if you're going to have milk production right. because yeah. it's in a pond. Yeah. They will defecate in the pond. They will walk in with it. They, they, they they're not going to have a foot, a foot mat to clean their foot going in there. So we have a situation where there is a water treatment plant in Carson Field, hmm. right? And we have never had these problems in the history of Castleville. Now we are water being taken away for three and four and five days. So we have to, I had to buy water last week. A couple of times gone by, we had to be buying water. So it's the, the, the profit margin and the problems and all of that is being hampered. But yet the authority is not, not there to assist us because the water treatment plant right. is there in Castleville. It was built in Castleville in 1948. Started the bill in 1948 because when Nestles was taking milk from the farmers during that period, none of us was not wrong that time. <laughs> yes, right? go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right, um, the milk wasn't the quality of the milk wasn't good, so they they put down the plant so that the, instead of the animal drink the water in the rivers and the ravines and the water holes and so on, they will drink clean water. So, so then, milk, Mr. Khan, can we see a contamination of the milk coming on the market? No, you wouldn't see it because Nestles would not put a, a contaminated milk out there, mm -hmm. right? But, but the farmers' like income the fresh, will right, go yes, down because yes. the bacterial count and all of that will yes. take place. Because, you see, it is not just, you know, people, the, the public is concerned about where the price is going to raise, but it's not that. It's survival for us. At, at, my, at this present time, I sold out some of my cows yeah. because where we live in Carson Field, right, uh, it's difficult because we, water is a problem. And so you have this situation coming up, but yet we're not having the necessary support from the agencies who should be supporting us, yeah. right? If you built a plan for Carson Field and you're only giving me water three days a week, two, probably one day with pressure or two days with pressure to fill the tanks up at the height, because look last night, we had current vent three times. Mm -hmm. So we have put, most of us put our tanks on height so we can have gravitation flow to the animals. But at this point in time, um, we we talking to the customer, the, uh, the communication manager. We're talking to everybody, we, the senior manager for the Central South area. But yet yeah, they're taking the water from our area and giving it to new areas mm. that, that come up. So we as farmers are suffering. We have a farmer with ch for, for chickens. He going anywhere he could get water and bring to his farm. We, just so that he could that supply his, it to his chickens. And, and so now, now, Mr. So, Khan, I, I, I understand. I, so trust me, I understand the issues that the farmers are going through. But I also want us to shift a bit just to the market because you will have people who want to buy things from the market. Mm -hmm. And I know some of the questions that people are going to be asking. So you just mentioned we may not see that contamination in milk. That's fine. But there was also something you mentioned in terms of people might be concerned about the pricing because is it is it that we're going to see a shortage now that we don't have the, the, um, the cows that we can be able to sell the chickens to sell and because of that shortage are we going to be seeing an increase in the market prices well in terms of the sheep and goat you're not going to see that because right. um if you could recall prior to minister clarence rambert leaving the office of minister of agriculture he used to be on program i can remember rockers intervening one time and he's saying that do not buy the, the, the meat out there because it's contaminated yes. and try to buy local yes but that is now destroying our livelihood because the amount of meat that is coming in and sell and sold very cheaply. Yeah. Right? And coming in from where? Imported. Imported meat. Right? But in terms of the local farmers, the broilers, for example. Uh, we broilers, saying, we yeah. have also imported chicken coming in. But mm -hmm. what happened is that the broiler market is a sort of secure because we have a lot of tunnel ventilation um, pens right now. So that so is that, okay that for is now. That is okay in right. that area. There. Right. But the people who don't have that, we have some, we have some farmers in the east. In the um, last Loma Sunday, Wallafield area, losing like 3,000 chickens, 4,000 mm -hmm. ducks, and, and ducks like that. And then what happened is that with the heat, right, the ducks and the chicken, even sometimes the sheep and goat, because on, on Thursday last week, I could not feed my sheep, goat and sheep until 2 o'clock. 
until the fire services had brought water for me. Because if you eat as a human being, you can't eat and go hours without having some, especially if the, if the, um, the food have a little extra salt or pepper, right. you know? So the animals, you can't feed them until you get the water for them. Mm -hmm. So we had to feed them at 2 o'clock when we got water. Later, so, as so opposed to So a normal to 8 yes. to 9 o'clock, we feed them. Now we are feeding them. So my production of milk now will go down because look at the hour that they're getting feed. Mm -hmm. And this is what most farmers have to work with. Now, in the case of the chickens, um, because of the heat, they could put in industrial farm, right, fans, right. fans that will continue to circulate the air or blow out the hot air and try to uh, bring in fresh air. We could do that for mm -hmm. the chickens, for the ducks. But what happens is that if you don't have that facility of putting industrial fans, not those little house fans. I know, you know what you're talking about, the big ones. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and which is a couple of thousand dollars well. Yes, yes. And then a high cost of electricity because the motors are larger. Mm -hmm. But you have a situation where the heaters, that the ducks and the chickens, they just want to sit and don't eat. So their weight gain mm. is, is, a, is a problem now. I have a friend, he said, well, that's my nickname, right? Raj, why them ducks and them just sit down and, and, and they, they're, not, they're not eating because the heat, they, they're not moving. And in some cases, some of them rather sit because if, they, they, if they, they're hot and they're cluster in one corner, some yeah. of them, would not get water in time and all of that. And some so what we're also hearing as well is, is that it's going to take longer for the chickens and them to, to mature. To come to market, yeah. mm -hmm. actual to actually to go to market. Market, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you have a number situation. But what is most disheartening to me is that the Ministry of Agriculture is silent. So then how do you want the ministry to assist the farmers? Okay. One, we had a spell of, of this dry time in the March, April time there, right? Mm -hmm. We had a dry spell. And um, we were talking to the ministry. We, we had meeting with the minister, co the committees and so on. We meet with them. We said, look, at this point in time, we have to use additional concentrate, which is what we could call feed. Okay. But this concentrate is in the bag feed. Right. And we, 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 we're doing that. But since COVID time, with all the difficulties the farmers face, we have not get anything like other sectors. So we said, look, could we get a little rebate on the feed? For the animals, could we could we get a help, right? Because we are under pressure. The international prices for um, grains has gone up because of the Ukraine war mm -hmm, and Russia mm -hmm. war. Yeah. So you have wheat, and then what happening is that the main product of the of the the wheat is flour, but we didn't see the flour price going up so high. But feed prices went up since the Ukraine war to now three times. Mm. So we are faced with uh, sort of triple and quadruple jeopardy. Mm -hmm. But we, are, we have asked months now, asked the Minister of Agriculture, look, we would like to have uh, at least a little $30 off a bag, right? Because you're talking about national farmers, you're talking about, I intended to go and ask the private feed millers. And we have a state enterprise feed mill, so we could get some help with that. Mm -hmm. Additionally, so one of the good things, and you know, people might say, look, here, here. One of the good things coming out of this dry season is the snail. Why you say that, Mr. Khan? The African snail. Tell us. Because of the heat. Mm -hmm. They can't take heat. Mm -hmm. You don't see them in the day. You only see them at the night. Mm. So when the dry season had come in, 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 into play in earlier this year when the ministry put out the bounty on the collection, collection of the mm -hmm. snail, mm -hmm. I remember. you didn't see any snail until the two, three days of rain start falling. Mm -hmm. Right, so they will bury themselves into the earth, it'll hatch, grow, and when the rainfall, they'll come out. Right now, some of us are benefiting from the the heat because the snails and them running from this yes. heat also because I remember have, they are shell. Of course, and know? they can cover themselves. I have yeah. one more um, question for you, Mr. Khan, before you go. The Met Office did promise some rainfall, right? We're expecting some rainfall in September, moving into October. How soon is it going to take for the crops to start back to bear how it's supposed to be for everything to kind of return to a state of normalcy? Well, the thing about the, the, with, with, with this humidity, right, the, the soil is drying, mm -hmm. drying up very quickly because for us, Grass is also a concern at yeah. this point in time yeah. because we started to see a lot of fires now coming up on the roadside or anywhere that is plenty dry mm -hmm. grass. It will take a, probably a couple of days, but once we get good rain, we will we will get the earth saturated. Probably once the 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 the, the wind start coming, the humidity drop. Yes, you understand. Yes. It stay that high is humidity. Then we will start to see the plant 
um, breathing properly, they will start producing like every, everything else human being too. You understand? Yeah. So we have us. We have once the rain start coming, we will have production. But what happened is that within this month and a half to two here now, because let me tell you something. If you have plants or animals or anything like that, and they don't get it water on time, you could have tremendous losses. Mm -hmm. Which is why I was asking about the losses, but I know you were saying the farmers have spread out across TNT so much that you might it's be able to give an estimate. Uh, but yes. the thing about it is that if, if in terms of the sheep and goat, don't expect any prices to go up because right. the imported meat buffering that and putting us out of business rather than in business. Right? You were the, saying that the chicken's kind of the, safe the for now. The chicken's safe for now right. because um, some of the larger um, uh, tunnel ventilation houses we have a lot of many countries, so that will that will su uh, suffice. Yes. But one of the last thing I would like to say, I, I I am hoping that very soon we could hear some positiveness coming out of the Ministry of Agriculture. Yes. To benefit the farmers at this point in time, yeah. things that we have talked about, we will to talk. Let us continue and see how we could get it working for the farmers. Mr. Khan, thank you so much for joining us You're this welcome. morning. I know thank that everybody you. heard the plight of the farmers this morning, and we look forward to seeing that conversation with the farmers and the Ministry of Agriculture. Thank so you very much again. for having me, and it's a pleasure being here. Of course. And that, of course, was the president of the uh, Carlson Field Village Council and the Farmers Association, just giving an update on what the farmers are facing with this sweltering heat. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. So the price is fierce, fierce, fierce. To maintain a family.